ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden. This is The Leader. We're collectively gritting our teeth with April approaching, preparing for energy bills soaring and a crisis fuelled by surging demand in Asia, Russia-Ukraine tensions and a spike in natural gas prices. But after years of conservative austerity policies and a drop in life expectancy caused by Covid, Britain's top health inequalities expert is warning London's poorest families are going to be hit hardest by the energy crisis. Professor Sir Michael Marmot, an epidemiologist and director of UCL's Institute of Health Equity, has been researching for decades how social factors influence health, particularly cardiovascular health. And Professor Marmot joins us on the line now from North London. What's your view on how the looming energy crisis will impact poverty in London? I've just literally today was looking at figures from the Joseph Rountree Foundation of their projection. If you're low income, the impact of how much of your income you'll spend on energy is enormous. It varies by type of household and so on. If you're middle income, it maybe goes up from 6% to 7%. It's an inconvenience, but if it goes up from 15 to 20 percent, that's more than an inconvenience. That's huge because you didn't have a lot of money to spend on going to the opera if um, you're spending 15 percent of your income on energy. And if it goes up even half a percent, you, you were right at the margin and you may have to forego the tomato sauce with your pasta um, if you've got to spend more money on energy. And that's a real dilemma because I look at that and you'd say, well, from a climate perspective, charging more for energy sounds like a good thing. Economists will tell you, you raise the price, you reduce demand. Well, yeah, but if that's throwing people into fuel poverty and living in homes that are too cold for leading a decent, healthy life. Uh, This isn't the solution to the climate crisis. And how have your landmark reports found inequalities are being worsened by social conditions? In my 2010 Marmot review and repeated in my 10 years on and my Build Back Fairer uh, reports, were six domains of recommendations that are the causes. Early child development, education, The third is employment and working conditions. The fourth is having enough money to live on. Think about the cost of living crisis that's looming. The fifth is healthy and sustainable places and environments in which to live and work. That includes housing, local environment, and so on. And the fifth is what I call taking a social determinants approach to prevention. You notice those six, I didn't mention healthcare. I take that as read that we want universal access to high quality care. And six million on a waiting list now for NHS treatment nationally. Uh, Huge issue. The NHS is buckling under the strain. It's been underfunded, 90,000 fewer nurses than there should be, 10,000 fewer doctors. And that all happened before the pandemic. And then there's the intersection with the pandemic pressures on the NHS and social care. Where have the last two years left London? 10 years of underfunding of the NHS and social services left us very ill prepared as a country to handle the pandemic. And we're reaping that bounty or whatever the lack of bounty is uh, for that. So the challenge for London, as it is for the rest of the country, uh, but the challenge for London is what are we going to do about those social services that got cut over a 10-year period? What are we going to do about restoring the funding for the health care system that we need? All of that's vital. What are we going to do about dealing with our housing problems? Could you tell us what the benchmark of child poverty is? Yeah, it's a good question. The the standard in this country is living in a household at less than 60% of the median income and not the mean. Uh, And that may sound like a nerdish distinction, but the mean is much higher than the median because we've got a lot of rich people knocking about London, more billionaires in London than in any other city. And they 
raise the mean, but the median is where the 50th percentile person is. So child poverty is having less than 60% of the median. And when I, I didn't choose that 10% idly, when we look at the best off countries in Europe, of course, the Nordic countries, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, South Korea, not a Nordic country, um, child poverty is around 10 or 11%. The Netherlands, it's about 12.5%. Um, where 30%, the US is higher, up at the Mexican level. How does growing up and trying to do your homework in a home that's not warm affect attainment and well-being? We did a report on fuel poverty in cold homes eight or ten years ago, but I don't think it's changed much. And we said that the obvious increases respiratory illness. It actually impacts on mental illness. It has an impact on children's learning ability and their progress in school, which is not so surprising. You know, if you're sitting there shivering and you've got to do your homework. And so if it impacts on mental illness and it impacts on educational performance, it really damages. It's damaging. And because if you're in fuel poverty, if you decide your dwelling's got to be warm enough to be habitable, then you may have to give up on food. So fuel poverty tends to be correlated with child poverty. And you've got to make these awful choices. And we documented in our reports with data from the Food Foundation for people in the poorest 10% of household income, for them to follow the healthy eating advice, they would have to spend 74% of household income on food. Well, with the energy bills going up, and if you were going to have to spend 15%, let's say, or more of your household income on energy, 74% on healthy eating, 15% on heating. That I'm not good at sums, but that sounds like 89%. Who's going to pay the rent, let alone buy a new pair of shoes for your children? It doesn't compute. And finally, what more would you like to see the government do to help people who are in tough circumstances? The Chancellor, between Wednesday and Thursday a couple of months ago, took steps that would put another 300,000 children into poverty by cancelling the upgrade to universal credit. He took £6 billion out of the system. Then he put £2 billion back in, but that's still a loss of £4 billion. And that, predictably, will increase child poverty. And my thought was, if between Wednesday and Thursday he can throw 300,000 children into poverty, between Thursday and Friday he could take half a million out. There's more news and features in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back on Wednesday at 4pm. <laughs>